All right, we're very excited to continue the second annual Tournament of College Athletics Trivia presented by the Scott and Holman Podcast. This is our third match from the first round. We've already had two really competitive matches. We're expecting another one here. And yet again, third match in a row, we've got a returning contestant from last year facing off against a new contestant making his trivia debut. So we're excited to jump into that. Uh, Matthew has been randomly selected as player one. You may know him from his work covering the Rice Owls over at At The Roost, a multi-time guest of the podcast. Matthew, uh, thanks for joining us. Glad to be back. Glad to have some time to talk some some sports and get some other things off our mind. For sure. And then uh, contestant two is Clip, who you may remember is our ECU guy. I think most schools in the American, we've had at least a couple different guests, but ECU, uh, Clip is our one and only guy. He's uh, Pirate Radio 1250 out there in Greenville, and we're excited to have him doing uh, trivia for the first time. So Clip, welcome to uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for the invite. I've watched a couple of the two previous matchups, and you guys do a great job with it. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, my co-host Sam is here as well. Sam, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. We've had a couple of really good matches before this one. I think uh, Clip, Clip going to use some of your uh, trivia expertise here. I got a lot of pressure on me. A lot of pressure. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if you're new to the uh, the show, it's pretty easy. There's going to be three rounds. The first rounds are going to be four categories each, as you see on our board here. We got our four categories up there. Our contestants are going to take turns picking categories. Uh, when they pick a category, a category, I'm going to ask them three questions. Each question they get right, they're going to get a point. Each question they do not get right, their opponent will be able to jump in and steal that point. Uh, never any uh, penalties for wrong answers. We like uh, we like our contestants to throw something out there if they're not sure. Uh, so we're going to have two uh, rounds of four categories each, and then the third round will be a final category and then uh, most points at the end of that uh, wins so we're going to go ahead and jump into it Matthew as we said has been randomly selected as player one so he gets the first choice from our first round categories which are the murder smurfs what state am I even in lies damn lies and statistics Matthew where do you want to start Okay, first I need to know who came up with the category names. These are pretty good. We did. We both. We both shared <laughs> one of our one of our many joys from putting this together is we enjoy coming up with uh, category names that'll hopefully make people laugh. All right. Well, I'll start with statistics off the bat. Statistics. The rice guy goes statistics. I'm trying not to make a joke here, but here. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. All right. First clue. According to the Navy school record books, Hall of Famer David Robinson had 516 of this statistic in his career, which would put him third on the NCAA all-time leaderboards, if not for the fact that the NCAA didn't officially track the stat until after his sophomore season. I'm going to go rush attempts. Now, rush attempts is incorrect. We're looking for David Robinson, the, uh, the basketball player. So, uh, Clip, what did uh, David Robinson have 516 of? I'll go blocks. Blocks is correct. David Robinson, the Admiral, 516 blocks in his career. Cliff jumps out to a one nothing lead. Back to you, Matthew, for number two in statistics. While the NFL began counting this basic defensive statistic in 1982, incredibly, the NCAA didn't officially follow suit until 2000. That'd be sacks. Sacks is correct. That was one of the things that blew my mind writing the questions for this game as we come up, that the sack is a 21st century uh, invention in, uh, at the college ranks. That, uh, that pretty much blew my mind. The NCAA lagging behind? Never. For sure. Speaking of the NCAA lagging behind, our final category in statistics, the NCAA still doesn't recognize this now common baseball batting stat, which, famous, which was famously championed by Peter Gammons and is calculated by the simple addition of two other stats. Uh, I'm going to go slugging percentage. Slugging percentage is incorrect. Clip, do you have a guess here? Yeah, I'm not. I'll say, is it OPS? OPS is correct. On base plus slugging. Uh, so clip with the, uh, the point there. And I don't really know what that is, but I figured that might be right. <laughs> it sounds smart. <laughs> on base plus slugging. Just add to your on base and your slugging. So you had half of the answer there, Matthew. Unfortunately, uh, no points for uh, partial answers. So clip with the two or one lead, and he now has control of the board. Your remaining categories the murder smurfs, what state am I even in, and lies, damn lies. Let's try what state am I even in. What state am I even in? One of our simpler categories. We're going to name you a Division one school. You just tell us what state is it even in. All right, number one Troy. Is Troy in Louisiana? Troy is not in Louisiana. Matthew, do you know where Troy ah. is located? That's because it's in Alabama. <laughs> Alabama is correct. Troy, Alabama. Matthew ties the game up at two apiece. And back to clip, what state am I even in? Number two, Weber State. That is in Utah. Utah is correct. Well done, clip. 
And final clue in the category, what state am I even in? Oakland University, hint, it's not California. Um, is it in Michigan? It is in Michigan. Good pull. Well done. Clip takes the 4-2 to two lead, and uh, control the board goes back to Matthew. Uh, he gets to choose between the murder smurfs and lies, damn lies. Let's go with lies, damn lies. Lies, damn lies. All right, this is going to be our audio clue, so each uh, clue is going to have an audio component. You're just going to tell us who is the speaker. Who is this famous basketball coach telling what he would later admit was a lie about a post-game interaction with an opposing player? Yeah, I didn't say that. Oh, because he apparently said of you that well, you were you, right. you can say whatever you want. Dylan Brooks is a hell of a player. I said, you're a terrific player. And you, you can take whatever he said and then go with it. Matthew, do you know who that was? <sighs> Probably should. Not coming to me. Not coming to you, no? All right, Cliff, how about you? I believe that was Mike Krzyzewski. That was Mike Krzyzewski. Well done. All right, number two in the category, lies, damn lies. Who is this scandal-ridden hoops coach two jobs ago swearing that he was giving up coaching for good? I'm finished coaching. Uh, this book was Closure for a Career. I, a school doesn't have to have the right to hire me. They should look at my full-court press, my matchup zone, my, my offenses, my motion offenses. They shouldn't have to answer questions about this. Matthew? That's Rick Pitino. That one is Rick Pitino. Well done. All right, five to three clip with the lead. Final clue in the category, lies, damn lies. Name the piece of excrement heard here trying to explain away his many sins, which included encouraging his players to lie to the FBI about their deceased teammate. Uh, it was almost as if, as I said, I was in a nightmare. Uh, I, and nothing, everything was surreal. And so I was doing things that I would no more do in a conscious nature. But all of a sudden, the as I said, the uh, realization that I was going to lose everything and my reaction to it couldn't have been worse. Matthew, do you know who that was? Don't got it. Don't got it. How about you, Clip? <sighs> said the Baylor guy. And I, I say, I know who it is. I don't know his name. <laughs> and I even said the wrong name and I'm going to do it again. I'm sorry to Dave Bliss that I keep saying your name, but it's not him. Who is it? It is Dave Bliss, actually. You said, you said oh. that. So that, that <laughs> yes. All right. So well done. Uh, so Clip takes a 6-3 to three lead. And Clip, you also have control of the board for our final category in the first round, which is the Murder Smurfs. This category is about Boise State football, with apologies to Stephen Godfrey for stealing his nickname there. First question in the category, name either one of the two quarterbacks to throw for over 10,000 yards in Boise State's history. Um... Let's go with Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore is correct. Brett Rippon was the second one. All right, second our clue in the category Murder Smurfs. Boise's famous – I should be saying Boise. I'm pretty sure it's Boise, and we're offending all of our Boise listeners. Uh, Boise's famous win over Oklahoma in the 2007 Fiesta Bowl involved a Statue of Liberty two-point conversion with Jared Zabransky handing the ball to this running back. I think his name was Ian Johnson. Ian Johnson is correct. Clips sounding out a lot of these clues, but getting to the right answer eventually seems to be working out for you. Uh, final clue. Joke the process. The process. <laughs> hey, don't knock it. It's working. It's working. All right, final clue. The list of controversial former Boise State head coaches includes not only Dan Hawkins, who we asked a question about last year, but also this guy who spent one year at Boise State in 1997 before heading to the SEC. We've been rewatching old ECU games on our show, including the Hawaii Bowl, and I looked at their past coaches and saw this name, and I can't remember. So I'm going to go with uh, uh, Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen is incorrect. Matthew, do you have a guess here? Controversial SEC head coach. 97. Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is incorrect. Houston Nutt was the guy we were looking Houston for. Uh, year there. All right, so that's going to be it for the first round. Clip takes an 8-3 to three lead into the second round. Still a lot of uh, long ways to go. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, Sam, who is going to uh, go ahead and introduce you to our second round categories. Same form as the last round, guys. Your four categories are Those Bats Are So Metal, Pigskin Palaces, Name an Award After Me, and Big Ten Gridiron Legends. 
Clippers player two, you have uh, command of the board in the second round. Pigskin Palaces. Sounds good. All right, first clue here. The University of Pittsburgh shares this stadium with the NFL Steelers. Heinz Field? Heinz Field is correct. Oklahoma State changed the name of their football stadium in 2003 to bear the name of this larger-than-life booster. Uh, Pickens? T-Boone T- Pickens? T-Boone Pickens is correct. Good pull there. Close out the category here. Although it's commonly known as Happy Valley, Penn State's home football stadium actually bears this official name. <laughs> um, oh, boy. I got some Penn State buddies who are not going to be happy with me. Um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, Penn State plays at, I don't know, Memorial Stadium is not right. This is not, unfortunately for you, the strategy of throwing a guess out there did not pay <laughs> off this time. Uh, Matthew, do you have a guess? That would be Beaver Stadium. Beaver Stadium uh, is the name. I, for, for as well-known as a program as they are, I would not have gotten that right if it was asked me before this. All right, so Matthew, we still have those bats are so metal, name an award after me, and Big Ten Gridiron Legends. Um, let's go Big Ten Legends. All right. When this Ohio State quarterback was drafted with a 15th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, it actually broke a streak of Big Ten quarterbacks not being drafted in the first round that dated back to Kerry Collins in 1995. It's Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins is correct. Perhaps best known as an all-pro wide receiver on the Pittsburgh Steelers Super Bowl 40 championship winning team, he was a four-year starting QB at Indiana, from 1998 to 2001, where he finished his Hoosier career with 3,895 rushing yards and 44 rushing TDs. Oh. Mike Wallace? This is not Mike Wallace. Clip? I think it's uh, another former Redskin in this thread, uh, Antoine Randall L. Antoine Randall L is correct. A running quarterback well ahead of his time. I was going way too far back. Not far back enough, rather. <laughs> While he will always be overshadowed by his predecessor, Drew Brees, this Purdue quarterback became the first in school history to start four bowl games and followed that by playing 10 seasons in the NFL. Ten seasons. Um, Hard to believe they got two straight quarterbacks in the NFL, but yeah, that is kind of crazy. Two straight quarterbacks with decade plus careers for a, for a while in the NFL. Uh, I got nothing. Who should I throw out there? We'll go with. Uh, I don't even have a a good guess. Clip. I think it's Kyle Orton. Is is Kyle uh, Orton? Kyle Orton incredibly had a ten year NFL career, probably double I would have guessed if I uh, if I had uh, had to know that. All right, so we still have those bats are so metal and name an award after me. Let's go with award. All right. Every year, the Los Angeles Athletic Club presents the top player in men's and women's college basketball with the award bearing this man's name. Uh, James Naismith. James Naismith is incorrect. Matthew? That would have been my guess. Um, (laughs) Wooden? Wooden Uh, is correct. (laughs) Only so many other names. It's Los Angeles, so that that was the hint there. It's it's a 50-50 proposition. John Heisman won a national championship as head coach of this school in 1917. Uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is correct. Ah, pulled that one from somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) And he's been called the father of modern football and is credited with inventing the line of scrimmage and system of downs. So it's a shame they named the award they named after him has come essentially function as the Golden Globes, the Heisman Trophy's Oscars. Hmm. Um, uh, uh, Maxwell. 
Maxwell is incorrect. Matthew. Um, nothing is coming to mind. Um, Nagurski. Nagurski is incorrect. No love for Walter Camp here. Camp. The man, the man who I think arguably changed football more than anyone out there. All right. Last category here, Matthew. Those bats are so metal. Uh, surprise, surprisingly, with an ECU and uh, Rice <laughs> representation here that took this long to get to uh, college baseball, but uh, nevertheless, college baseball category. Bolstering its reputation as the top college baseball conference from 2010 to 2019, two different SEC schools won multiple college World Series titles. Name either of them. Multiple within ten years. Um, okay. Within within the decade in that right. question. Yep. LSU. LSU is not one of those two Did schools. I know the other one. Then clip. I was thinking LSU. Um, I'll say Florida. Florida was not one of them. Uh, Vandy, oh, and, Vandy and South Carolina. Carolina. Ah, I'm about to say this was tricky. Pick which one? I think There's South Carolina went back. Cat- to- yeah, I think it was right at the beginning of the decade, too, right, Dustin? That sounds right. I believe so. All right. Before this third baseman became a three-time MLB All-Star, he hit 31 home runs in 2013, his junior season, for the University of San Diego, which was more homers than the entire output of 223 Division One teams that season. Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant is correct. All right. Well, Didn't know he went played West Coast. <laughs> 31 homers of the dead ball is, is still blows my mind. All right. This school is still in a commanding first place lead for all time college World Series championships with 12, despite their last title coming in 1998. Stanford? Stanford is incorrect. Clip. I'm going to get fired from doing PA at ECU baseball games because I don't know any of these. <laughs> um, uh, USC. USC is correct. Nice pull there. <laughs> All right, so we got a big lead going into uh, the final round, but some crazy things have happened in the third round, so it's not over yet. Clip up 14-7. to seven as we uh, advance to the final round. So the final round, single category, it is the last 12 non-quarterbacks to win the Heisman Trophy. So you guys are going to alternate Matthew, then Clip, then Matthew, then Clip, naming guys that you believe are among the last 12 non-quarterbacks to win the Heisman Trophy. As long as you keep giving correct answers, you get to stay in. As soon as you give an incorrect answer, you are out. So here's your free hint. The list dates back to the 1985 winner. Uh, so Nebraska running back Mike Rozier in 1983, like I'm sure you're both about to guess, is a little bit too old, doesn't quite make it on this list. So we're looking for every <laughs> non-quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy since two, uh, uh, since yeah, 1985. So Matthew, you're behind, so you get to go first. Uh, so go ahead, and whenever you're ready, give us a non-quarterback. And uh, I should also say, uh, not to give anything away, but vacated Heismans do still count to us. So uh, Matthew, whenever you're ready, go ahead and give us a non-quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. Uh, vacated Heisman's do count. Vacated I'll, Heisman's I'll start. I'll start with Reggie Bush as the free square. Reggie Bush. That was kind of the giveaway. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to have to wait to answer that question right. until someone brought it up. But I, it was a little bit of a giveaway. So uh, Reggie Bush uh, with the little asterisk there back in 05. And uh, clip it's to you. Uh, how about Desmond Howard? Uh, Desmond Howard is correct. There he is. Michigan back in 1991. All right, go Matthew, it's to you. Backwards, the last one would have been Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is correct. And clip us back to you. Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram is also correct. Moving on down the list there. Then we got to go really far back, don't we? <laughs> it's been a lot of quarterbacks. Um, Ricky Williams won one. Ricky Williams did win one. He is... We're going back to all the 90s running backs, aren't we? Oh, man. <laughs> right there. So there are only seven left. The lead is six. So if Clip answers this one correctly, that'll officially uh, put this one away. So, Clip, you got one more? I can't remember if he won or if he was supposed to win and didn't. But Charles Woodson? 
Charles Woodson is correct. He won it in 97 for Michigan. So well done, Clip. So that does clinch the win. Too big guys, of a hole. I was going to say, if you guys want to keep going, since you haven't given any in incorrect answers yet, uh, okay. if you want to go ahead and keep, uh, keep naming guys, I would love to see how many y'all can get. Oh, well, my turn. I know we got Eddie George in there. Uh, we do have Eddie George in there. There he is. Since there's no stakes, I'll throw out a name. Uh, he, was, he was the best player, but I don't know if he Double won. or nothing. Peter Wark, did he win one? Uh, he did not win one, actually. So, uh, Matthew, you got any more here? Um, controversial possible rushing leader, uh, Ron Dane. Ron Dane is correct. And then okay. I'm need to remember if this meets the cutoff, but the other two I'm going way back would be – uh, Barry Sanders. Barry is he, Sanders is he is, in in the range. Yep, there we go. Back in '88. The other one would be Bo Jackson, right? With him, they were like back to back or close. Bo Jackson is also correct. He is the. Whoops, last wrong button there. He is the uh, uh, the last guy in '85, so he was the other uh, last one on the list. So, oh, but dude, you, if you got is, uh, running, I'd be I'd be even more impressed. We're down to only two left. Is Rashawn Salam? Rashawn Salam, very nice, very nice. <laughs> this is, so there's one guy left. I keep putting the Between button. 85 and 88. Uh, like Emmett Smith or? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I think I got it. Do you have is it? it? Is it Tim Brown? It is Tim Brown. Well done. Oh, I have to say, I'm like, we're out, of, we're out of running backs. Very it's got to be. Very impressed. Well all done. Right, so, very, a very competitive game overall. Good job, guys. Uh, Clip, congratulations. <laughs> of all the three, we had three first-time competitors, uh, the first two lost. So thank you for being the only uh, new competitor this year that actually advanced to the next round. Clip, congratulations. Awesome, man. Thank you guys for having me. That was fun. And Matthew, we had, enjoyed having you last year. I know you won your first round game last year. Didn't quite make it out this time, but a very competitive game. Uh, thanks again for joining us, Matthew. Absolutely. It was good fun. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and as we mentioned on our previous episodes, uh, we are going to be making a $20 donation to the charity of choice for all of our contestants, all eight of them in this year's contest. The winner is going to get an additional 200 So I want to thank these guys not only for joining us and hopefully having some fun doing some sports trivia today, but also helping us uh, raise some money for good causes. So hope you guys had a lot of fun. I know we, uh, we enjoyed putting it together. Absolutely. And thank you. All right, and so listeners, I'll be sure to check back. We have our final first-round match coming up uh, in the next day or so, and then we'll uh, advance on to the semis. So thanks again.